I'm going to explain how you can work as a TV news reporter without a broadcast journalism degree or without going to college at all. I'm starting right now. So your first challenge is to develop the skills that will make you hireable in the first place. Most young reporters at least ostensibly develop those skills in their broadcast journalism classes. Now I work with a lot of those young reporters at a small TV station where I direct newscasts. And I've noticed that a lot of the reporters don't read much. As a result, they're mediocre writers. You can get hired instead of those recent graduates by developing into a good writer. And you do that by reading. Ideally, you should read as much news reporting and nonfiction as possible. Now note that writing for TV news is different than writing for the web or writing for print. Good TV news writing features short, specific, and easy to understand sentences that start with the subject, then follow with a power verb, and then conclude with direct and indirect objects. Now here's a tip. Learn to write for TV news by reading the transcripts of TV news stories. Go to PBS's site, click on a story that aired, then click on the story transcript. Those are the words that the reporter said during the story or the words that the newsmaker said. When you see those words written down, instead of just hearing them as you're watching TV, the script will make a stronger impression on your brain and you'll begin to internalize the structure and rules of TV news writing. Also, I produced a deep dive tutorial on how to write for TV news and I provided a ton of examples. I will link to that tutorial at the end of this video. By watching my deep dive tutorial and reading the transcripts of TV news stories, you can develop into a better writer and a better job candidate than your typical broadcast journalism graduate. Your next strategy for developing into a standout job candidate is to learn about local government. A lot of the young reporters that I work with just want to be stars. That's what animates them. And the easiest way to get on TV is to work in news. So that's what they do. But they don't actually care about deep dive news reporting or about researching complex topics. The TV stations, on the other hand, need reporters who can cover politics and report hard news. Now here's a tip. You can fill that void by reading staff reports. So let's take a step back for a second. The way government bureaucracies work is that they employ staff professionals. So for example, the Public Works Department employs engineers who design and inspect roads and bridges. The Public Defender's Office employs lawyers who defend people accused of committing crimes. The staff professionals' bosses are the elected politicians, the city council members, county supervisors, county commissioners. The first group, the staff professionals, write staff reports in which they advise the elected politicians on how to formulate smart public policy. You should read those staff reports because they explain the challenges that the community is dealing with and how government is attempting to resolve those problems. Just by understanding the difference between staff professionals and elected politicians, you now know more about local government than some of the young reporters that I work with. But don't stop here. Go online and read those staff reports about topics that interest you. Follow the same story as it winds its way through multiple government meetings. And over time, you'll accumulate the knowledge needed to fill those TV stations void of politics reporters. Your next strategy for excelling as a job candidate is to develop software expertise. Most young reporters don't know how to animate text like I'm doing right now. They don't know how to design simple thumbnails like the ones you see here on my news page. But TV stations need those skills for producing and posting stories. YouTube is exploding with tutorials that will teach you the software basics. If you want to learn the programs most commonly used at TV stations, learn to edit video on Premiere, design graphics in Photoshop, and animate graphics in After Effects. As you're developing your writing skills, learning about local government, and developing software expertise, you should also produce news stories. Set up your YouTube channel right now and start reporting on topics that you're already familiar with. Is your dad a heavy equipment operator? Go interview the guys down the street who are building that new road. Are you a fashionista? Start reporting on the new clothing and jewelry trends you're seeing at the bars and clubs. And don't be shy. 
Sure, at the beginning, your stories might be mediocre, but you improve at news reporting the same way you get better at anything. You've got to do it. So start right now. Now here's a tip. As your stories improve, you're going to produce a reel. A reel is a highlight package of short clips excerpted from your best work. And it's the primary tool you're going to use to demonstrate your reporting skills to a TV news director. So let's assume you've developed the skills that will make you stand out when jockeying for reporting jobs against broadcast journalism graduates. Hey, congratulations. Fist bump. What's up? Oh, wait. Now you're responding to job postings or applying for jobs that list a broadcast journalism degree in the requirements. Okay, don't trip. You're not screwed. The news director doesn't really care whether you have that degree. She does want to be sure that you understand the basic mechanics of how newscasts work and that you have basic video news reporting skills so that it won't take that long to train you. The degree is just a signal to the employer that indeed a college has screened you and you meet those basic requirements. Without that signal, without the proof, the news director might be unwilling to take a chance on you. So, apply at the TV station for jobs that don't require a broadcast journalism degree. And then once you've proven your professionalism, your reliability, and your skills as a news reporter by showing them you're real, that's when the news director is more likely to let you slide over into that reporting gig because generally speaking, companies are more likely to relax their formal education requirements for internal candidates, that is, for employees who already work at the company, than they are for some stranger who is just responding to a job posting with her resume and reel. So here's a tip. Apply to work on the tech crew of a TV station. So for example, you don't need a degree to work as an audio operator. During the live newscasts, the audio operator controls the anchor's microphones and audio from the videos that are playing. You can demonstrate your Photoshop skills by working as the graphics guy. He designs the graphics for the show. You can work as a camera operator who shoots the live video of the anchors in studio and also serves as a liaison between the director and the anchor. The master control operator prepares all of the station's programs for broadcast. Those jobs don't require a broadcast journalism degree. In fact, they don't require a degree at all. Most of them just require basic familiarity with technology, which you have. Once you've demonstrated your reliability and your value as an employee in one of those non-college jobs, that's when you'll show the news director your reel and you'll slide over into that reporting gig. Start developing your career right now. Watch this video to learn about a program that helps you launch your career without relying on a credential and watch my deep dive tutorial on how to write captivating TV news stories. Good luck, I'll see you in the next video.